rock stars, roadies, or groupies were harmed in the making of this broadcast. Giving it to you straight and no chaser. This is On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson. Welcome to On The Rocks. I'm Jamie Wilson, and we've got a great show for you tonight. Um, there have been jokes about my age and this group for a while amongst uh, each of us, and that, that's going to be explained later on. But hey, this is another lockdown episode. We are currently on uh, our uh, lockdown ECQ Season 3, and um, we're all wondering if what's going to happen in the next couple of days because um, uh, there has been no announcement yet, but at least I hope you guys are staying safe and staying home. And um, making sure you guys are, you know, healthy uh, to fight off uh, the effects of this virus, which is very, very worrisome. But thank God we have music to keep us company. And talking about music, uh, just a few announcements from Offshore Music. Now, the jazz group Extrapolation is bringing you their live set vibe in the form of an album called Alive at Wildgrass Studios. It's going to be released uh, on all major streaming platforms on August 22. So something to look forward to. This five-track EP will play exactly like an extrapolation live set. Ballad. Their usual mix of eclectic original music and reimagined covers going to blow your mind. Now, this forthcoming EP is the band's first official live release. And, of course, still rocking on all streaming platforms. It's the Eraserheads, Sabadon 1995 from the Esquire Recordings. It's killing it out there. And, you know, make sure you pre-order your vinyl copies because it's coming out in September. So yeah, that's that's the uh, announcement from Offshore Music. Thank you also so much to our friends from Buenos Dias, Panaderia and the Misty Mountain Cafe. Really two, uh, two amazing, amazing, amazing companies who have been doing really well during this lockdown. The Misty Mountain Cafe gives you some really great premium coffee. The Cordillera Gold is my favorite. favorite. And when you pair it up with Buenos Dias, Panaderia's Milo Buns, it's the most awesome thing in your mouth. Now, also, thank you so much to our friends from Liquor.ph. Now, it may sound crazy, but guess what, guys? Liquor.ph has just dropped their prices on over 100 expressions all over their website. Get amazing prices on bottles like the Dewar's White Label. Yeah, baby, that's what's keeping me company tonight. The Dewar's White Label, single malt, uh, which just got reduced down to 888 pesos, delivered right to your door. No promo codes, no signups, no minimum orders needed to enjoy these prices. Just the best bang for for your buck. So thank you so much. Uh, Liquor.ph. Now, okay, these guys, these uh, my guests tonight are uh, an amazing group of people. And listening to their songs over the past few days um, and revisiting their songs, uh, I must say their songs have a unique flavor. Um, they are, uh, they definitely have their own sound, which amazes me because it can switch from melancholy to joyful in, you know, uh, a drop of a hat. And um, the amazing thing about these guys, they're so goddamn young, but they're so goddamn good. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Howard, Papu, Billy, and Pat from O Flamingo. Hello. 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 What's up, guys? What's up? So, okay. So, already you guys are making me feel old. But please, no calling me Tito Jamie. Tito Jamie, shut up. I will. I will remove. Okay, po, okay. Po. <laughs> yeah. okay. I will remove you from the stream. <laughs> but guys, how are you guys doing during this pandemic, buddy? It's been more than a year. It's been a little crazy. We're on another lockdown right now. So how are you guys doing? Um, you know, Billy, let's start with you. Ah, uh, business as usual for me. Uh, work didn't stop. It just moved. To my house <laughs> so yeah continue lang continue kahit na no shows so that's what stopped <laughs> but everything else in my life it's it's the same 
a little bit more difficult though since we're working from home. So adjust, adjust. But uh, yeah, I think I'm after um, almost two years getting used to this whole being at home situation. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, right? The work from home setup, it's really strange because I mean, I, I work in a lot of live shows also. And then all of a sudden you realize um, when we first started last year, when we created our pandemic workspaces, right? Our pandemic workspaces, like our work from home spaces with your ring lights and your, you know, your setup and all that <laughs> hasn't moved. It, it hasn't moved, diba? Parang, parang inisip mo, okay, that's why I got a laptop so I can bring it around. Now there's no reason to bring it around. It's it's yeah. just there. Um, our dining table has been taken over by our, you know, my wife, the money streaming there. I'm in another room and it's kind of crazy, but it's also exhausting working from home, no? Or have you adjusted already to the schedule? Uh, well, for me, um, my new work uh, is fully remote, so mas adjusted sila so dun sa, uh, dun sa remote setup. So uh, uh, unlike most companies who are just adjusting to the work from home setup, we're like talagang flexi time. So anytime that we're available to work, we'll work. Ganyan. So mas madali siya, honestly, that way. Uh, it requires a lot of trust, though, <laughs> that your your everyone is working. <laughs> Pero yun <laughs> accountability. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, nobody's really monitoring you. Nobody's like peeping over your shoulder, boy. Are you doing your work? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. That's what makes it easier. Yeah, yeah definitely. True. Oh, how about you, Howard? How are you doing during this pandemic? Yeah, I'm doing fine at the present. Um, unfortunately, the same as I guess last year when we were, parang nangangamusta <laughs> with each other. I think. Unfortunately, nothing much has changed when, with regards to like working from home, not playing shows. I think, uh, but yeah, getting used to it. Then, like, I think I, I've I've actually been a more routine animal now mm. compared before. <laughs> so I think that's a good. That's one one good thing I picked up from the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, before the pandemic, with our routines, you can, you basically were not in charge because if a show was going on at this time, your call time was like this. You had to juggle things around, mm -hmm. and now that we're at home, um, a more established routine yeah. is actually taking place. But my routine, my personal routine, is messed up, man. I'm sleeping at four a.m. Mm -hmm. and I don't even have an excuse because that at four a.m. Yeah, kasi galing ka sa tuktog, di ba? Galing ka sa gig, right. tapos gigimik ka. Okay, but why am I still sleeping at four and I'm at, I'm awake at eight? You know, Man. yeah, but I take naps though. I take naps yeah. there. I just, a, aged, I, just, I just aged <laughs> myself. I just aged myself. Yes, I make siesta. <laughs> it's important. Yes, it's really important. Everyone really... should take siesta. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I find day. also that like Zoom fatigue is so real. Yeah, um, especially when you're in the most boring meetings. Parang you're just like, oh, this could have been an email. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But at yeah. least, at, at least you know, technology has provided us this. So I get to ask you questions tonight that um, I'm I'm interested in getting to know more about you and the stories behind your band and your music, which is going to be great. Let's go to Papu, naman. Papa, how are you doing? Yeah, uh, I I naman actually na I enjoy ko yung fact na hindi ko kailangan lumabas at mahipag battle sa traffic just to be from like one place to another instantly ang 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 laki niyang convenience but at the same time it's sort of affect, affecting how i look at the future parang i always get this feeling na end of the world na so <laughs> parang ano na ako ngayon parang i'm in a like one day at a time mode kumbaga na parang okay whatever mali ko in 2 years mali ko wala nang 2 years so yeah, are you are you, an, are you are you an apocalypse boy? No, not even. <laughs> pag pag nangyari apocalypse, like mauuna na ako parang take me. Take me. <laughs> I'll be the first to go. Like ayaw mabuhay sa post-apocalyptic world parang. <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the post apocalyptic movies we've seen, they're always survivors, diba? Whether you're fighting against the machines, the terminators, mm -hmm. the zombies, diba? I always imagine that yeah, I want to be one of those guys. <laughs> but it's cool. This, but, in, but, but in this, this is not the apocalypse I imagined. I'm like, I, I can go to the grocery, but I have to wear a mask. And a yeah, yeah, it's uh, oh, no, boy. it's a slow and uh, no, slow painful burn. demise. I, I can't, uh, I can't carry my battle axe <laughs> to the grocery. Right? <laughs> but where's the fun? Where, no zombies. Oh. <laughs> where's the fun in that? Like? <laughs> 
And you, Pat, how are you doing? Yeah, I, I think ano, uh, I'm similar to you na we would go out and just always kind of on the go. And then um, now I've everything's just been put to a stop. So, uh, wala, I don't know. I've just been selling all, all my things. Uh, I've I've already let go of my entire CD collection that I I had you know I, I held dearly as a as a teenager, and just to kind of um, I guess fill in the gap you know, that the the gigs were providing, and I've had so much free time, but that doesn't mean that I've been doing anything <laughs> productive. <laughs> um, so, but like yeah, in long. And I learned how to bike. And oh, that's great! That's great. Bang. That's at least yeah. that's a new skill you acquired. Yeah, it it, it is. Uh, and in lang recording, uh, doing whatever music thing I can from home, trying to adapt as as much as I can. And it's funny when and then I I, I got a dog. That's it. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's big. <laughs> oh. It's it's yeah. funny when this pandemic hit and you realize okay I'm gonna have a lot of time on my hands so I'm dami kong plano uh, I'm gonna learn how to play guitar I'm gonna lose weight I'm gonna work out do you think any of those <laughs> happen none of those happen <laughs> nah. the most the most I've done is get a haircut you know during this pandemic that's big <laughs> it's hard that's to a, get a haircut now <laughs> right I was so pretty man I was so I mean, I'm I'm a safety officer so I I do safety officer work for shoots and all that so that. That's what's paying the bills, and that's what's also keeping me busy. But you know, um, I I was actually lamenting the fact that, parang, whenever you go out these days, you know, this past uh, year and a half or even more, um, it's always for some official reason. And I was just thinking last night that wouldn't it be great to get you know go out and get together for no official reason? But you can't do that, right? So I've actually been doing this in the groceries. Na parang may deliberately ako nakakalimutan sa grocery. So the next day I have to go back para lang makalabas ako para ng bahay. Oh, my excuse. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot the milk. So I have to go out and just get milk para lang may excuse ako lumabas sa bahay. Pero And may course, reason pa rin. Oo, oh, oh, may reason. May official reason. Yung hindi lang yung lalabas ka lang to watch the sunset. 'Di ba? Yung yung ganun. And but you're right though. I mean, thankfully we don't have to deal with too much traffic uh, nowadays. Although it's funny because I took an RT PCR test this morning and I had to go get tested, right? And um, there's still traffic on the road. Traffic, yeah. yeah. So I look around and I'm like, "Is it Cuba, though?" Because <laughs> it's not like the usual lockdowns we had. So it's kind of funny, um, mm-hmm. kind of weird. But then we find ways, right? That the Filipino will always find a way, like I do, you know, yeah. forgetting certain things in the grocery. <laughs> All right, guys. So I've been I've been curious listening to your music um, for the past few days, and I've been thoroughly enjoying it. Um, you don't make me feel old when I'm listening to your music. Only when I'm talking to you guys, that's when I feel old. But <laughs> listening to your music, um, I think it's it's fantastic. Um, I think um, I have some tracks here I want to talk about. But before we get into that, I want to find out um, what you guys uh, listened to uh, when you were growing up. What your musical influences were. Uh, let's start with Pat. Uh, I listen to a lot of punk, punk rock. Um, I listen to I mostly rock. Uh, whatever was on the radio at that time, it was the year 2000. So, <laughs> rap metal. Um, what else? Incubus. So much Incubus. So much Dave Matthews Band. Till yeah. the, they were like the first jam band. I, I, I like they were the first band. Na parang I was like. Jam band is a genre. Like fuck, all right. Like then, I was just so kind of into the Dave Matthews Band as well, and I refused to listen to like other genres because I felt like that was my identity. Right? Like I only listened to rock or whatever. But eventually, I, I broke through and I, I listened to like dance music and and uh, just like some smooth jazz, which was my I guess entry into jazz, and then. Um, yun lang eh. mostly ano do, like mga pop punk and stuff like that emo as definitely emo I was definitely emo yeah naka comment si Audrey so that's what sa I private I listened to in high school naka comment si Audrey <laughs> sa private chat Spice Girls daw Spice Girls 
Oh yeah, Spice Girls. Uh, that's like really growing up, like grade three, like that, like literally getting bigger. Um, Spice Girls, Boy Zone. I I was more of a Europe pop person than a US pop. So I like Boy mm-hmm. Zone, Spice Girls, Nine Nine One One. What else? What's a uh, Bewitched? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting when you mention like going from punk to Dave Matthews band because that alone is such a huge jump. It's a, such a huge jump from mm-hmm. you know when uh, for, in a genre where you're listening to rock, but if you grew up with punk and you know especially punk in when at least when I was listening to it, yeah, it defined my identity down to the point where yeah, man, I'm gonna wear the you know combat boots and I had a mohawk <laughs> and I was angry at everything. And then when you when you jump to Dave Matthews. That's a complete, I think, Pat, that's a complete relaxation of <laughs> just your internal emotions, diba? Kasi from punk to Dave Matthews, parang from galet to anti, you know, everything. Hike protest. up your skirt a little more. Oh, yeah, right? That's the best line ever, man. That's the best line ever. <laughs> But um and, and incubus I'm um, going into you know it's funny because you know the Spice Girls and all that we all have these like guilty pleasures that we listen to. I've recently been creating a playlist of my guilty pleasures and really it's honestly so embarrassing to play, but I I don't care because it just brings you back to a time, right? It brings you back to a time in your life um, where you listen to what you thought was cool, but you don't think it's cool anymore. But it's nice to revisit, you know. Um, what got you into playing music, Pat? I, I've always liked music. Um, I think when I was a kid, there was a lot of music in the house. So my mom was super active in the choir in our um, church. And she had a like a opera group of <laughs> what seemed at the time like a bunch of old ladies. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and then they would practice in our house and just I would just um I would kind of hang out in the same area but like adjacent to them so like if there was a wall between us I'd hang out on the other side of the wall and then I I'd, I'd just sit there and then listen to them play these church songs but they were they were very much like an, an opera more on like an opera singing group um so well then i i i took piano lessons and stuff and then um i didn't like that and then eventually i i had this like radio small radio and then i would look for songs on the radio um because i was really into that song um that thing you do so I would just spend the whole afternoon scanning through all the stations looking for that thing you do because it was my favorite song. <laughs> yeah. I swear, and it was so overplayed that I'd maybe hear it five times in one afternoon. And then I, I just recorded it. And then I, I started recording more songs and I found NU. And then I got into rock music at, at that time, which was uh, 1998. So there's a lot of Foo Fighters. Yeah. And then... I, wala lang. Then, gusto ko yung drums ng Foo Fighters. And then, um, eventually, like, after two or three years, because I was so scared also to ask my parents if I could learn to play the drums, because it was so weird also as, like, a girl. So, um, it was hard for me to, to ask. I don't know why I felt that. And I had no role models. So, um, yun, it was, like, a long three years of me just like like kind of mustering this courage to do that and eventually i i found my perfect alibi which was my seventh grade graduation and and then i i uh then it's then just kind of just took off from there i guess it's funny how like you know because of your gender you felt like it was weird to ask right um me and yeah, growing yeah. up me and my growing up i have three older sisters and i'm the only boy and all my three sisters got piano lessons. And when I arrived at the scene, um, they're like, no, he's not going to learn how to play the piano. You know, let's not give him music. Let's, let's get him into sports. And guess who's the one that ended up in a band? 
You know? <laughs> it's so ironic that way. But I, I can't play piano. I can't play an instrument to save my life. And I'm just wondering what my life would be like now if my parents actually did not impose that gender. You know what I mean? That generation kasi. It's, what do you mean? You can't, a boy can't play the piano. And I'm like, hello, Billy Joel, Elton John. But maybe that wasn't the perfect example to give my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. So you've been playing drums since your since seventh grade. That's when you learned it all took off. Mm. Yeah, since that's, I was 13. That's fantastic. That's that's a great journey from opera choir to to N U one oh seven. And that's that's <laughs> that's a very interesting journey to consider. What about you, Howard? What music did you grow up listening to? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um I think the first album I bought with my own money, aka Ipon from Baon, was <laughs> I know, American Idiot by Green Day. So that was like nagbukas yung SM Batangas. Noon. That was the closest mall to my house in Lipa. So we went there nung first day nung SM Batangas. And went to like an Astrovision. So yun, I got American Idiot and my brother got the simple plan. So like we had that pair of CDs. <laughs> nice. But before that, I don't know. I was already into Parok and Edgar. Like I had to memorize Yes Yes Show for a talent thing in class. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, since it's, since, it's uh, so funny. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Howard. But see, Raf is already like wow astro vision throwback i'm like yeah, making me feel old astro vision bago pa rin yan para sa akin eh <laughs> <laughs> CDs, yeah. bago pa rin yan sa akin kasi <laughs> generation kasi ako eh yeah. so you had to learn you wait you had to learn something for your school for a class what a talent show yeah i think it was a music yung music class in mape or something so i i, I had a partner so we shared the Yes Yes Show <laughs> rap. And yeah, <laughs> interestingly, I think in college when I met Sina Billy and Papu, memorized ko pa rin siya when it would come up. So I guess, you know. Do you still know it now? <laughs> I, I don't think I can oh, come recite on. it properly. Oh, come on. <laughs> now, 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 now you're making a trust now. Come on. You know, be proud of your, be proud of your, uh, the this origins, pare. Red light syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the music. Yeah, but that's your. That's the first music that you purchased with your own money. Yung Green Day. The yeah, I mean, yung American, oh, oh, Indian. American Indian. But what music did you grow up listening to before um, you purchased this? What what did what did your household listen to primarily? Um, my my dad loves like sixties rock. So uh, growing up, I was always hearing Beatles, Led Zeppelin. Um, he also liked U2, so I was very familiar with that. Para yun yung main stuff. Um, but growing up also, like, yung dad ko and my uncles, they they like to play in a, con- a combo, which is what they called um, bands then. So yes. I grew up na they would, I know, uh, pag may, 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 may birthday, they would hang out and then Completo gamit nila, like they have a sound system, they have drums. So I would I would watch them play like from a songbook. Uh-oh. All these songs, like Living on a Jet Plane, yung mga favorite no? <laughs> Dito ko. Um, so I grew up uh, hearing that. Pero hindi pa ako interested sa, sa music nun. But I was more into cartoons and video games. But yeah, like, same like Pat, like my mom is also uh, a choir person. And like we lived almost in front of a church. So, wow. choir choir music was like, oh, yun yung music. Uh, to me. <laughs> like, those were the two sides, yung choir, yung choir saka yung banda ng mga tito ko. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, since I got the American Indian album, I was already into bands. I think that was the time na um, yung OPM band boom of like mm. 2004, 2005, like yung Mahail, Sponge Cola, Pupil, like, all these bands. I think that's when I first um, really got into like being a rock musician. Or, like, like when I when I saw like local people being in bands, parang ah, pwede, pwede ko rin yung <laughs> pwede pala. May option pala yun, yeah. may option. 
So what uh, what made you? But but you know, growing up, growing up with you know a, a household full of music, and that's not just choir music from the church across the street or your choir practice. But you know, your dad would have a combo, nga, combo. Um, what made you pick up an instrument? What was the reason? Do you remember? Um, it was interesting because um, I was already trying the guitar from my cousin. Pero, like, I learned how to play more than words. Pero yung tinututu ko lang yata yung plucking lang. Pero, tas, hindi ko ginagawa yung left. So, it's probably something. <laughs> Ganun lang yung tunag niya. Um, <laughs> but I never really asked my dad to get us a guitar. Pero he was a guitar guy. But then, one, like, he visited Kiapo one time. Tas, nakahanap yata siya ng, like, good deal. Of, like, these two small Suzuki, eh, yam- small Yamaha nylon guitars. So he got us those um, grade five yata ako, and then yun, I, I, that's how I got into it. Like he taught us um, yung baseline ng Stand by Me. Hindi ko alam kung baseline or like just the melody, like yung do 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 Cool, cool, cool. Well, you know what? So far, nobody's given the right answer. Uh, every time I ask musicians what got you into playing music, nobody ever says, especially you know the guys at least that I've had on the show, nobody ever says, oh, I started picking up the guitar because I wanted to make Harana a girl. Or I got I, I, I wanted to be in a band because I wanted to scope out the chicks. You know? It I'm sure always, I met. <laughs> I'm sure I met. So you're, so you're still denying that you didn't do that for that reason? <laughs> I don't know. Unfortunately, I, I think I got into music because because I, I couldn't get girls then. Parang oh. <laughs> it was the coping mechanism. It was the co- I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, let's go to Billy. Billy, um, what music did you grow up listening to? Uh, a lot, actually. Um, it's whatever was there. Um, I didn't really actively look for it before when I was growing up. I think it's because my parents listened to so much, like very diverse music. No, like my dad would listen to like from the range of, of um, Mozart to Lighthouse Family. You, you, wow. you name it. Parang so labo ng ng playlist ng dad ko. No? So whatever he played, yeah, you know, so he would he would always bring me to mga CD stores. Oh, before parang you can just try out CDs. And yeah. listen to it. Uh, yeah, it's parang, I, I just always picked up um, memorable music um, quickly. And then everywhere I go, um, yeah, kung anong available music, I would, I would, I, I found myself really listening to, to it no matter what. So uh, growing up, um, we had a piano at home. So I was the most inclined to touch it and like play along with the, you know, um, with the piano. Tapos, they tried. Putting me in piano lessons, but I guess like standard schooling doesn't work for me. Um, sobrang malikot ko raw, so parang hindi siya nag work out. So eventually, I just taught myself um, in my own way. Um, so I always found ways to learn how to play instruments growing up. So, for example, um, when my brother bought a guitar, uh, maybe he bought a guitar kasi gusto niya maharala ng babae. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. <laughs> <laughs> Pero yeah, nung bumili siya ng guitar, I would like sneak into his room and and try to learn the guitar by myself. Kasi that time, I was watching MTV and like all the cool people were in bands and everything. You know? Tapos parang, yeah, eventually I ended up learning the guitar by myself with song hits, ganyan. Tapos, um, when I had the chance to go to the mall with friends, yung mga CD shops, um, nakita ko dun sa shelves, parang pinakamura, were mga local... Uh, CDs, 250 as opposed to my international <laughs> CDs na 500 pesos. <laughs> oh, tama, tama. Ay, di ko afford eh. Sabi ko, oh, shocks are cool. <laughs> diba? Parang cool, cool. Parang gusto ko itong bilhin. Yan. Tapos parang, um, like Howard, um, nag-ipon ako, hindi ako makain sa school para makaipon ako ng pambili ng, <laughs> ng CD. So every Friday, I would, every, every Friday, every other Friday, I would score one CD. And then yun, same story as Howard na parang, ah, attainable. Attainable to have a music career. These people are so cool. So parang, what I did was I would beg my parents to allow me to any school fair that features um, local bands. 
So, dati yung mga lineup, mga ano yan eh, mga 10 bands a night. Tapos big stage. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sobrang ganda. So, lahat ng school sa buong Metro Manila napuntahan ko as a teenager, just watching all these bands, <laughs> diba? As in, sobrang fangirl. As in, fangirl talaga. Like, mga, mga sponge cola, mga hail, uh, sugar-free, itchy worms, lahat yan, mga sinustock ko na bands when I was a teenager. Uh, sandwich, yan. Lahat yan, stinock ko as a, as a kid. And then, eventually, yeah, in college, my goal was just to to meet musicians because the ba parang Eraserheads they started na um this, they started the, their band in college and I was like this is my time to shine I'm yeah, gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it you can do it yeah so I joined an org and met Papu and Howard and the, the rest is history so that's how I got into this whole music thing right it's just a parang some natural inclination I guess and then I just like worked towards it. Yeah, I would say natural inclination because, I mean, if you had the patience to teach yourself how to play the piano and how to play the guitar um, before going into the song hits, before going into, you know, professional um, musicianship, that's that's a lot of patience, man. That's a lot of patience. That's a natural inclination, diba? Si Howard may gusto sabihin. Dinalapit niya yung mic niya. Kukontra ka ba? Kukontra ka ba, Howard? Kukontra ka ba? Ikaw naman, Papu. What music did you grow up listening to? Uh, sobrang top 40 yung exposure ko. As in, hindi ako like, deliberately nag-seek out ng music growing up. Para kung ano yung nap- pinapalabas sa MTV that time, yun yung napapakinggan ko. So, mga Backstreet Boys, Savage Garden, TLC kind of thing. Uh, pero... Na, ang nakakatawa doon, I, I got my first guitar in grade 2. I was 8. Parang wow. nag-decide yung nanay ko, galing siyang Cebu for, for a business trip. Parang, oh, pasalubong ko, guitar. Tapos parang ako, yeah. anong gagawin ko dyan? Hindi ko alam. So, pa, <laughs> parang might as well. <laughs> Ay, yan. Ang guitar. Di, like, wala akong, wala, never ko siya ni-request or anything. Binili siya for me. Tapos parang, okay, sige. Nandiyan na eh. Di, aralin na natin. Same way, na kaya ako na exposed to nicer, I'd say, sorry, I'd say nicer music. Um, kasi what, parang ganyan din, nagbinilan ako ng uh, Walkman. So wala nga akong kaset. So parang, ano gagawin ko dito? So parang na-force ako mag-dig <laughs> sa crate ng magulang ko. Na, tas sila, hindi rin sila ma-music. I mean, in all honesty, yung mga kaset nun, as in nakatago na sa shelf. Parang I just wanted to try the Walkman, paano siya uh-huh. mag-work. So parang, oh, na- na- nakakuha ko ng hot dog na kaset. Tapos parang, wow, hot dog. Same way na with, na-discover ko yung Beatles kasi merong DVD, ay, VCD player sa bahay. <laughs> Tapos parang, oh, what ko lalagay ko dito? So n- nakakita ko ng CD. Parang yung mga pirated na compilation. Tapos parang, oh, wow, ito pala yun. And then I think yung naging turning point ko, um, sa pagtugtog was when I learned how to play bar chords. As in, ano to, mga uh, grade 2 ko nakuha, tinigilan ko agad kasi nga ang hirap ng bar chords. Parang grade 6, may nagturo, tinuruan ako ng classmate ko, parang ilagay mo yung daliri mo dun sa fret mismo. Mas madali pindutin. Tapos pa ako, <laughs> oh shit, Tips. oo nga. <laughs> ang galing. Yun, tapos yun na, nagtuloy-tuloy na from there. Tapos dun, na ako, dun ko na na-discover yung mga mas OPM. Because that was around the time na nagkaroon din ng band wave of yung mga 2000, 2003, 2005. Like in mga Sponge Cola, Paroka ni Edgar, and whatever. So parang lumaki ako not listening to band music. Pero since parang malabo naman tugtugin yung Backstreet Boys sa gitara, parang nung nahanap ko yung mga... Diba? No, parang, tutugin mo, parang papatugin yung synth yan. Di yan nangyayari ever. Diba? Parang, so, so nung, nung narinig ko yung, yun nga, yung mga OPM, tapos parang, ah, okay. Pwede kong matugtog in real life yung napapakinggan ko. Yun na yun, nagtuloy-tuloy na yun from there. So, grade 6 to high school, tapos nakahanap na ako ng own, like, music. Parang, I think, mind or life-changing for me was when my music teacher played the video of G3, sila Steve Vai, yes. um, uh, Joe Sat, uh, Johnson, 1996 yun. So parang, yes. what? 
Pwede yun gawin sa gitara. Pwede yun parang woo Parang yun na, yun na. Dun, dahil doon, never ko, never ko kinaya. Ang hirap niya. Hanggang ngayon, mahirap pa rin siya. Pero na-unlock yung parang wow. Pwede pala yun. There's Pwede. so much more you can do, not just oh, more chords. Oh, oh. Tsaka luckily, luckily yung school namin had a sort of very active band scene back then. Um... Yeah, I'd say. K- kasi madalas kaming may school events and then they'd get like musicians or like yung mga marunong and then if you force nila to perform, like cover whatever <laughs> songs, parang kung ano-ano oh, lang natugtog ko. Force talaga, force. Nung high school, parang part ako ng parang high school band. So parang tuwing may event, oh, parang yan, aralin nyo yung lahat ng kantang yan. Tapos yun, yun, yun siya. So wala kami ng mga parang battle of the bands or whatever. Ano kami? non-competitive appreciation mm. of music. <laughs> it's funny that high, high school is the common denominator for like actually being able to play live and usually you were forced to. Even if you wanted to, you can't seem so eager. Parang, sige, ako, ako. Di ako <laughs> parang yung volunteer spirit, di ba? Hindi, hindi masyadong active. So yeah, they're forcing me to play. Pero nai-enjoy mo naman. Mm, saya. Ang saya. Na. Di ba? <laughs> the funny thing about uh, the, the best part there is that you were actually excused to miss class. At least I yes. was. Yes, sa mga, yes, yes. Sa mga rehearsals, oh, exempted ako sa class ito. Kahit may <laughs> test, oh, exempted. Oh, oh. Kakanta ako. <laughs> <laughs> diba? As in, minsan whole day. Like, hindi na, papasa ako para lang tumagtog. Parang, Correct. yeah. Nice. <laughs> and that's when you saw the benefits. I'm like, ah, okay. Masarap, masarap pala to be a, in a band. Yeah. <laughs> cool pala to. Okay, guys. So, all right. So, from a very diverse um, musical background and uh, and uh, I guess musical histories of uh, you guys. Oh, sorry for the for the young people who are tuning in. Uh, a Walkman is a device that was first <laughs> released in uh, the mid eighties. They play these uh, cassette tapes. Um, Google yun lang yung cassette tape, kasi mas mahirap yung explain. <laughs> Pero analog busha, di ba? <laughs> Um, so how okay? So going coming from such mu- diverse musical backgrounds, how did the band get together? Um, Billy, you, you're telling me a story about you know you just went into you know uh, a class and you met Howard, you met Papu, and then boom. So how yeah. did the band get together? <laughs> Very random, sha. Um, we had like uh, we had different ideas of what we wanted to have in a band, and then our 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 actual link was Howard. We were all friends, kasi, but then we were playing different music. Uh, we have we had different bands. That's parang, I don't know, we just got together, talked to each other. Uy, Howard, parang gusto ng mga gitong band. That was sabi ni Papu sa kanya separately. Uy, Howard, go atay ng gitong band. That's parang, eh, pag sama sama sa mga band. Go atay na yung band. Yan. So, wala siyang, wala siyang sense, kasi baka iba ng gusto namin tig tigan. And then eventually, um, may, may one gig that required, um, um, us to perform again required. Para uy Billy musician ka, di ba? Oh yeah, sige, game. <laughs> game, ibanda na ako ngayon. Oh, or game. Tas parang <laughs> kami ibanda na ako ngayon. Tas parang sabi ko guys, root one nine six daw yung gig. Shocks, di ba? <laughs> ano big? Di ba big time don? Big time yun, big time. Oh, big time. So syempre, kailangan lahat ng songs natin original. Lakakaya ka pag cover cover tayo, di ba? <laughs> so, so so in in two weeks time oh, we yeah. crammed we crammed all the songs. We wrote oh. five songs in two weeks. But we made si Howard na mga songs. Oh, so we finished all of them in five in in, in those two weeks. And you know the songs no EP actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. So first EP. First gig, first EP. Those two weeks. Yun, yun yung product. And yung yeah. tunog ng songs dun ay malayo dun sa initial two ideas na lo- nag reason kung bakit kami nagform in the first place. So parang yeah. <laughs> ano, ano, yung, ano yung two uh, ideas? Ano yung two ideas? Uh, ako nilapitan ko si Howard to start a Beatles cover band. Yeah. Ako parang more of like uh, um, uh, Brit Rock. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys. Uh, ano, oo. And, so, then, uh, and then and then Oh Flamingos came out of <laughs> yeah. Beatles yeah. cover band Ay, Arctic lang. Monkeys. Parang yung, so, ano. Both British. <laughs> both British. Oh nga, oh nga, oh nga. That actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes, a, that makes a Brit lot of sense. Yeah. If you actually sang with an accent, yun na yun eh. <laughs> oh, my, 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 British what, accent. Oh, you I say yun. direction. <laughs> That's true. Oh nga. That's true. Lumabas. Oh, see? 
Yeah, and you have to wear your influences on no, no, no. <laughs> right there in the album. And okay, so you know, um, it's funny because some of the best stories, some of the best bands that have gotten together have are actually comprised of members of other bands, and they came together with an idea because somehow the band that they were currently in wasn't fulfilling um, their musical, uh, I guess, tastes or the direction they wanted to go to. Um, how did the name O Flamingo? With an exclamation point. <laughs> Happen. Nung gumagawa kami ng poster, sinabi ko sa artist, huwag may exclamation point yan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What hap- How did O Flamingo, the name, happen? Okay. Gosh. Sige. Um, it, originally, kasi nga yeah. British yung, yung ano namin, uh, eh, diba? yung vision namin. Both ends, yeah. yung, yung band namin was called Wanker. Wanker. As in, Wanker. Parang yun yung idea. <laughs> Parang, yung Facebook group natin, di ba? Yung pangalan niya, Yo Wanka on my face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, around the time when we were gigging, parang siguro first three gigs natin, no? no? I think it parang was more. Clem. Parang I think more. it was Clem Castro who suggested na parang, you gotta change your name, guys. Like, hindi yan pwede sa, ano, sa Catholic school. Or some, I mean, gets like, hindi yan acceptable. So, yun. Ang nangyari was, itutuloy ni Billy yung kwento. Sige. <laughs> ah, oh, yan. Yeah. So, nang nangyari na na uh, we, were, we were transitioning as a whole world into social media. Facebook was becoming more popular for marketing music, ganyan. Mm. So, parang we were trying to be smart about it. Okay, so, uh, as a new band na wala namang may kilala sa atin, how will we like, stand out in this whole uh, social media scene, no? Uh, pag ginugal mo tayo, tayo una lalabas dapat, no matter what. <laughs> so, ah, so, we SEO. just put together, yeah, we just put together two words that people don't usually say. And then we made sure na may, ano, punctuation marks para special, you know, lagi kami nakikita agad. And yeah, we ended up with O Flamingo. It rhymes, it's two words, um... <laughs> We're the we're the only one with that name. We we did uh, a wide search of social media. Kung mayro na iba, there was a clothing company. There was. Pero parang ten followers lang. So eventually na talen naman sila. Well, so like, wala. <laughs> 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 so we note out na sila. <laughs> they must have seen us eventually. No, I don't know. <laughs> have tried they tried to? to the... Have they tried no, to no. approach you to sponsor uh, you? No, <laughs> the no, very no, no. <laughs> Well, I think O H yun eh, like Ohio, parang ganon. Kasi capital O H. Yeah. Uh, mm. Pero before at the start, you're trying to like put a meaning to it. Kasi lagi ng question yun eh, why O Flamingo? Oh yeah, because we're eccentric. Kami kami kami. We're like, uh, ah screw that. Let's just tell the truth. The true story, guys. <laughs> so it's, it's it's a Google search name. It's a it's yeah. a Google search optimization name. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> So, meron may, pa kami sinasabi na na parang, like the oh, the, the name itself is a logo. Meron pa kami ganun sinasabi na na. <laughs> Kasi if you write it down, may visual cue yung, yung comma, yung exclamation point. So, And you were talking about the bird, na parang the flamingo is pink because of the The, the diet and whatever. May mga ganun pa kami. Sabi yeah. na, okay, it's like whatever. a bird, but it's not, but it is. Tapos uh, napagod yeah. din kayo sa so kaka-explain. Yeah. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> kami sure. Hindi kami sure sa sinasabi namin. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's what's fun about this name. Like, if, you know, knowing the real history of this name, that it's a Google optimization um, <laughs> name. Um, if you didn't know this story, or even once you do, O Flamingo has so much character already. Because... Not only of um, the two words combined, but also of the you know the, the punctuation marks, the the comma and the the um, exclamation point. But it also leaves it open. It, parang it doesn't box you in. You don't know what music you're expecting when you listen to O Flamingo. So parang that clears the board for when somebody discovers your music. Parang ah okay, so this is what O Flamingo. Wala kang preconceived notions na pumapasok na parang you know there are death metal bands that you know it's a death metal title, di diba? And then if you if you're expecting death metal, then all of a sudden oh my god, they're boy band. What the hell, <laughs> di ba? So walang ganon, walang preconceived notions because somehow you left it open through your Google optimization uh, <laughs> title. <laughs> you you left it open. Um, enough that people will just be open to your music, which I actually really do appreciate. I think that's a brilliant uh, 
it's a brilliant move, even though now we know the story and we don't know much about the Flamingo's diet, but you know, at least we know why the band is called Oh Flamingo. I, I think now. we'll go with your story now from now on. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Open ended. Open we'll leave ended. it up to you. Okay. Uh, nice. Just listen to oh, the yeah. music, man. Just listen to the music. <laughs> no, yeah. note note yeah. Stop yeah. talking yeah. about the name. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah, but, 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 but you have to say it in a British accent. Stop talking about the name. <laughs> Stop talking about it. It's not about the, the not, not, not about the name. It's about the music. <laughs> and then you went on to let's talk about Wonderland for a bit. Because that's mm. what uh, comes across in all the Google searches now. It's tied to you guys. Interesting. Um, interesting. You know? That's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. All the Google searches, all the things are saying, oh, these guys release an EP and everything, book Wonderland. <laughs> so how did that happen? You, it was a, a pre-event contest yeah. in 2015, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And <laughs> you guys were asked to perform and you won? How did this happen? Okay, Billy. Billy's like covering her mouth. Like, oh my god, I no, sense funny. an embarrassing cuento coming up. Yeah, <laughs> it's very embarrassing actually, because that time we were trying to release our EP, right? So what we did was uh, as a fundraising activity. We're trying to be working smart here, you know. As fundraisers, we would join all the battle of the bands available to us. <laughs> <laughs> including the high school ones. Oh, Even right. high school ones. That was parang, namin yun. Yeah, fourth year no college na kami. Kahit, kahit na hindi kayo estudyante, <laughs> pumapasok kayo sa Battle of the Bands. Yes, ng yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Tapos yung isang Grand. high school Battle of the Bands, ang nakatalo sa amin, one click straight. Kasi high school mm. talaga sila. <laughs> yeah, friends. Oh, wow. <laughs> They beat us. They beat us no, by the yung coin voting thing. <laughs> I think kasama nila yung magulang nila doon sa battle of the <laughs> So, ganun siya. So, basically, kumikitang kabuhayan siya para may budget uh, kami pang produce ng fun. EP. So, lahat, uh, lahat uh, ng battle of the bands. Um, we know that we had an advantage over the high school children. <laughs> so, we took advantage of it. We weren't the oldest. In the, no. we, were the we weren't the oldest. We were the oldest. There were people who were older than us. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, score kami ng da- tat- dalaw- dalawang tatlong wins. UP that- fair. UP fair na nalad din tayo. Oh, that's yung A ba yun? Hindi, hindi, hindi yun. So, hindi, sa hindi ano, na Wonderland na at saka sa some UP org. One. Yeah, whatever. Oh, what's that? Oh. So, uh-huh. nakatikom kami ng enough money for the EP. So, yay! Yeah, <laughs> so, at nice. least, mga may winnings kami ng 50,000 50, in total. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good Tapos start. We... Para tayo yung mga ano, yung mga sinasali, yung anak nila sa mga contest sa barangay. Yung sinasingin contest sa barangay. <laughs> Tapos, anak, sali ka dyan. Ano, para meron tayong ano, yeah. dinner. Yeah, Pang-invest. Oh, oh, Pang-invest yan. Pantisera. I know the interesting... <laughs> I think you wonder bandit. It was it was a big thing at the time. And I think Four of Spades was also one of the contests. Yeah, ang kasama natin noon. Oh, Four of Spades when they were starting out. Loop I think was there. Yeah, from Iligan, uh, yeah. Iko na maalala niyo. Sorry, cool. ko na ko. We got to play the the following year they had a music uh-huh. festival and yeah, uh-huh. there were big acts playing from uh, around the world so may Death Cab for Cutie, may Bon Iver. So I guess, I guess Kesha may recall then one of the first like bigger modern festivals locally. Mm. So Yung, when you guys sorry, playing playing for the Wonderland, right? Uh, up to that point, was that the biggest stage you played? Uh-huh. At that point, I, I would say yeah. I would say yes. I, I think so. In uh, scale, biggest. I mean, we played you in bear. potential. Oh, pero in terms but, like, of attendance, we played first at one p.m. So para ah, nga, wala, wala tao. Oh, so, <laughs> technically, hindi pa dumadating yung mga tao. Yung crowd no? <laughs> we we've played bigger crowds like UP Fair or something. Yun dagat oh ng tao pero mm-hmm. I guess in terms of like kung saan man siya pwedeng i-shoot sa resume, parang yun yung PR. Yun, parang, oh, wow. PR, yes. Pang PR. Oh, pang PR. Oh, hmm. pang PR, pang PR. Parang yung mga ano, yung mga Coachella poster, 'di ba mga malalaki. Tayo yung sa pinakababa doon sa mga oh. wala. <laughs> Or and, and, and others, right. and, and others, yes. more. But that's cool. That must have been a, an amazing experience to be like you know, I'm um, playing. It's it's funny when you start out as a band, diba? Um, you know, you play small, small, very, very tiny holes in the wall, na bars mm. and all that. 
And I remember um, jamming once in the UP fair. I think the first time I jammed in the UP fair was with POT. And I was uh, I was an MTV VJ at the time for MTV Philippines, and I got to jam. And I and ako ata rin host And yeah, dagat ng tao. And it was amazing to to experience all that energy being thrown back at yeah. you. But it it also must have been such a uh, parang, I don't know, it must have been such a funny feeling of going on at 1 p.m. at wala pang tao sa Wonderland. <laughs> but also, that, you know, that uh, that gives you the freedom also to do what you want. Uh, di ba may ba? Oh, may, may? Sorry? Bon Iver Cuento yung band. A- ako oh. lang ata yan. Ako lang ata yan. <laughs> kwento tungkol sa guard. Kwento, oh, kwento siya tungkol sa guard backstage na bawal kumausap ng ng non-white people <laughs> yung banda, I guess. No I don't know. Are you serious? Yes, and they were very protective of um, of the international you know, acts. International artists. acts. So may, yeah. parang may may upper side <laughs> sa backstage. <laughs> like legitimately. We had a different um, backstage. As in, hiwala yung backstage. Different backstage. Oh. And then the locals had a brown wrist tag and they had a white wrist tag. It's funny. It's all, it's funny. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's so unacceptable these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. So the quenta there is that nagpa picture ako kay Justin Vernon, vocalist of Bon Iver. Tapos ayaw nung guard. Tapos sabi niya, dude, just let her have a photo with me. Tapos nung binigay ko yung camera, parang clinic lang niya, pero yung sahig nung pinicture niya. Ito so niya. bad. <laughs> <laughs> so bad trip, bad trip. Yeah. 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 It's okay, it's okay. Sayang pa rin. Sayang experience. Sayang pa rin, syempre. We, I still got to meet him. It's fine. Yeah. No, but I think and it's interesting. And you got to watch. I think it's yeah. interesting because when you guys actually, like, for example, host your own festival like that, and you are no longer built under the others, but you're headlining. At least you know you have two. You have two choices, de ba? Either gagawin mo yon na oh, ikaw may brown wristband kahit bawal ka dito, or open lahat, de ba? I actually appreciated a lot of because I mean you guys like grew up with Wonderland. I I'm from the Pulp Summer Slam um, generation, and there was never any of that. But then of course even with the international acts that pop brought in they were actually pretty cool mm. you didn't have a separate backstage they had a separate room but not an entirely separate backstage yeah. and i think it's important i mean like with all these you know that's the the thing with managers and the music industry which filters down to the security which keeps people separate i think personally i believe that all musicians backstage should be together even if it's sometimes more magulo than what's going on on stage <laughs> diba? or in the audience I think that's the whole point. That you get to interact with other musicians that you never normally would chat with or sit down and have yeah. a beer with. Diba importante? Okay, so paano, Pat, you weren't part of the band yet back then. How did you get kidnapped into this madness? <laughs> ganda. Ganda ng kidnapped. Uh, I, I went to this bar in Cubao called Today X Future. And then it was a Tuesday, every Tuesday night because they have jazz night. So I went there. So I go, it's Tuesday for the go jazz night, right? And then Papu was there and he was hosting jazz night that night. And I, I knew Papu from being part of O Flamingo. And I knew that uh, I was aware that uh, Fries, the previous drummer that had left for quite a while na, as in ma, over six months had passed na siguro at the time or something. And, um, wala, like, I was just really drunk and then I told, I was like, hey, Papu, if you need a drummer, I'm game. Parang ganon lang. And then, uh, I don't know what happened next if you, if you, someone messaged me or Howard messaged me or Anything. But I just said I was game. Something like that. And then yeah. the next thing you know, the uh, next thing I knew, or that maybe we all knew, is that my my practice na. And then yung practice na yon, it was a dapat may jam for a Saturday na tatlo yung gig nila. Lagari so, agad. So, super <laughs> lagari day. Tapos yung 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 advice para sa gig na yun, parang ilang araw lang. Tapos, 
we were trying to schedule a jam, but none of our schedules would would match. So what yun nagyare? In dun sa jam, kami dalawa lang ni Howard. Nas din jam namin yung songs. Oh, As a two piece. Tapos, <laughs> pumunta na kami sa gig. And then yung first gig, oh technically, oh is is the first jam. Yeah. <laughs> first so, real well, jam. Yeah, yeah. So the first gig was the first jam, and it wasn't like in a bar. It was like some Independence Day, whatever thing. Big event. In Kubao. like the middle Kubao? of Kubao, Kubao, parin, which ironically was in front of right the in BS front of the There you go. They closed the street. They closed the street down where today X Future was, and the stage was literally in front of today X Future. And then, yun lang. Then, uh, no, ano naman, no expectations, no nothing. And then, yun na papadalas lang yung yung jam ganon. And then, eventually, after like a month or two, like they they asked me to join the band. Which was also another awkward story. <laughs> another awkward story. Why were you drunk yeah. again? You know, some of the best oh, no, stories. No. We were very when, sober. You know, I was drunk. No, more than sober. sober. <laughs> Sabi ni Rilo sa comments. Sabi ni Rilo, oh, drunk recruitment pala. <laughs> but it wasn't what we expected because basically they didn't recruit Pat. Pat was the one who said, I'm going to recruit Networking. you. <laughs> well, well, sorry, sorry. On our side of the story, naman, prior to that happening, as in sobrang na namin. inaayin na namin si Pat to get us a sessionist. As in parang, pero wala kaming way at nahihiya kami at natatakot. Nahihiya kami kay Pat. At the, so, yung, I, I never go to Today X. As in parang, I think once lang yun nangyari ever. And then nangyari yung conversation na yun. So parang ako, guys, game si Pat. <laughs> 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 there we go. To. Because <laughs> we've been getting sessionists to fill in the drummer spot for a long, you know, matagal na, mas six months. And parang never namin nahanap yung yung parang ito na, ito na. We even tried recording with the session drummer. We eventually just scrapped the entire recording. Because nga parang hindi namin vibe. And then mm-hmm. I think it was when um, Billy said, "Na kunin na natin si Pat na totoong drummer." Doon ako, like, na-mention na- ko na ito dati, na parang doon ako nagkaroon ng peace of mind na since sila yung rhythm section, na parang, oh. okay, may bas-bas na to ni Billy, okay na to. Mangy- game na to. Mangyayari na yeah. Also, to clarify, ano, hindi ganun kakapal yung mukha ako. Like, there was this also, <laughs> like, <laughs> ano, like, yung sa Oflam, na- like, nakikita ko na sila, like, gig sa Giho, whatever. Then, when I found out, they're looking for a drummer. Or, wala silang permanent drummer. Not necessarily looking. Parang, I like, I really felt like, I, this is like an opening na, I can actually contribute to this band. Like, I felt like, with, with what I listened to, then, mas, at that time, yung, I think I knew Howard best. So, it's like, oh, I know what Howard listens to. Like, this, it was like, enticing for me. Um, because I was like, oh, this is some, this is like the kind of major weird music I want to make, but I just can't with just anybody. Parang mm-hmm. ganun. So when I, when I, when I saw Papu, <laughs> ayun, nilapitan ka na siya. Opening. <laughs> yeah. Parang ano nga yun eh, end of night usap na yun eh. Yung, oh, and and, and, and little, little did you know pala, Pat, na si Papo was like, guys. It's interesting you said that because you're also looking for a drummer who who wanted to play weird stuff yeah. that other drummers necessarily don't vibe. Want to play. <laughs> yeah. Diba? So, yeah. Super yeah. sakto siya kasi I think when like when we started playing with Pat. Like, and daming moments sa mga set na nagtitingin na kami tatlo parang, what? Ginawa na yun? <laughs> like, kasi wow. Pat likes to play, Pat likes to um, improvise live then. Eh, we like doing that. So, super good fit siya. Well, if you're in, if your entry into the band is uh, first uh, uh, jamming as a two-piece and then tugtog ka agad, 
with the band with the full band in front of us. That's all you can do, really. <laughs> Pare, diba? That sets the that sets the whole tone for the relationship, you know, right there. In fairness. And I think I think it's great that um, you know with with um, with the evolution of your sound from your your first EP to your recent uh, your your latest release, I think it's nice that you know the weird stuff is still going on, but I think it's weird stuff that has a really great pop sensibility. It's not so weird. Like I my classification of weird stuff is like oh my god I don't even I don't understand what's going on. And with you somehow um, going back into the character or the clean slate that you give me, um, because I have I had no expectations of, of what I'm going to be hearing from an O Flamingo um, album or a track, that open slate actually really helped because you were free to create basically anything. And I want to talk about um, just a few tracks, um, if you can tell me the stories behind them, which would be great. Um, one particular track that is on loop right now is Inconsistencies, which I really, I really appreciate. What's the story behind this song, guys? Yeah, interesting. Because that was Inconsistencies was one of the like first songs we really played together. Um that was story. I think I, I already had a demo of this song, like maybe a year prior to the band. Um, and then I don't think it was complete then. Like I think it just had a verse and a chorus and like just the kring idea. Um, so yeah, I think during that that first root gig that we played, like that's when we really um, put together the arrangement. And uh, I think a, an interesting anecdote is like we had a young inconsistencies has a really long solo yes. <laughs> instrumental period, right? And then, na naalala ko lang siya kasi the the solo part is very long because we we when we were like building up our set like we were I think we were trying to make the lo- like a mo a, a long set as much as possible so parang we found that as a good opening to get tagal na natin dito tapos mag jam lang um, that that is the standard <laughs> formula of everybody writing original songs and you have to fill up 45 minutes and you only yes. have three songs yes yeah I yes have, exactly I have, I have bands that when you're starting out just keep soloing pare <laughs> because <laughs> we only know three songs uh-huh. and uh, we have to maximize 45 minutes to an hour but i think yeah. it leads it leads to an exploration of form say um, that you don't have to be um, stuck in a okay verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, short solo, bridge. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that that exploration of solos and some of the best bands I've seen live, when they start exploring and they're in their solos, it's not really a solo. Yeah. It's yeah. just somebody taking a turn and the rest of the band going with them. Mm-hmm. And then it starts becoming about the rest of the band. And you, you're you figuring out as a listener, as an audience member, the moment that I am aware this is happening, I'm always anticip- eagerly anticipating, paano sila babalik? Hmm. <laughs> when Once you explore out there, ang oh, ganda na, di ba? Ang ganda, mat- you know, mainit na yung jamming and rock all and that. <laughs> oh, oh, pero tangin na, paano kayo babalik? Hmm. ba? And that's, that's, I think, that marks uh, the, uh, a certain musicality when you can find your way back. Diba? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Come, <laughs> but that's, that's, na lang that's, na. Oh, that's, that's, time. <laughs> uh, or 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 sudden <laughs> stop, sudden stop, three, two, go. Okay. Yeah. Balik. <laughs> Balik na lang. And then going into you know from an inconsistencies to four corners, particularly four corners. How how did that happen? Um, interesting because in four corners, when was that released? Like twenty eighteen, nineteen, nineteen. Oh. Like. Four Corners was written then around the same time as our first few songs, like 2014 din siya. Um, it was a post-breakup song. So like, looking at the four corners of my room, alone. <laughs> 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 really in your four corners. I'm just in my room. Um, well, it's funny know. because it's very applicable these days also. We're uh, still in yes. the four corners of our room. Think, yes. Um... Yeah, um, and uh, I think uh, especially with that song, because I'm not too nan kyung 
A, C sharp minor, B minor, D minor progression ah. from like like the old song. So I think that was the first song that I applied that. Yung ibi break mo yung yung scale with like a minor chord. So <laughs> that that's cool. That's cool. That is cool. But I still I still I like think, the whole idea of the four chords. Yeah. Yes, Billy. No, I think what's special about four corners is we, we tried playing it actually with our previous drummer Fries. Um, right, but we never right. really got to complete it with Fries, no. But when oh, Pat came uh, along, uh, given her experience, I guess, with Apartel and um parang, you know, mga, mga more more straightforward music, but like giving it flair, parang yeah. we were able to revive Four Corners to make it very like groovy oh, and that, enjoyable. That right. So yeah. yeah. That's a really good was- insight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pat. Yeah, and I was gonna say when I heard the demo, it was just like a uh, you playing the guitar, and it was in a very kind of standard blues form. Yeah, like or not standard blues, sorry. Like it was kind of like in a bluesy. Half time lang siya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it was like in a bluesy. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like very like loose strumming, I guess, and more melancholic, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then. It kind of became like a, I don't know. I guess like a, a more boxed, uh, gritty, um, mm. gritty kind of uh, song. Well, I think whatever you know, Pat always brings uh, something amazing to whatever she does. Um, I've seen her live, and I swear, a lot of people have always told me, um, you know, that's the hardest hitting drummer <laughs> that we've <laughs> ever heard. And I said, yeah, but, and, you know, I mean, yes, admittedly, Pat, you hit hard. And a lot of people can hit hard. But what's amazing about Pat is her groove. The parts. Yeah. The, the, the groove and her choices sometimes are amazing. But Pat, we're talking about you like you're not here, right? Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, like, oh, oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's your musical <laughs> IQ. Yeah, yeah, used to it. it. Used to oh, it. Man, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was, I'm just mentally dis- disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's fantastic because, like, with your groove and your choices that you make, I've watched you, I've watched you closely on the drums, um, and enjoyed it. And that I think it's fantastic because this is quite unexpected. Eh? What you do, what you are able to do with O Flamingo, is something that you don't do with your other groups. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that goes back to, um, yeah, I want to play the weird stuff, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that I can't do anywhere else. And then your latest release now, uh, which is called Galit, and you just released your music video as well. Um, how, how? What is that song about? Kung four corners, the four corners of my room was heartbreak. <laughs> ano naman yung Galit? Uh, it's a uh, it, it's Galit sa sa employers. Seriously, <laughs> 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 uh, yun lang siya. It's 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 the song is open ended enough for it to apply to any any annoying thing in our life but yeah. um it, it it came from like one day i came from work tapos pag-uwi ko para ayoko na dito pagod na pagod na oh niloloko niya na lang ako <laughs> para oh. is, is gonna na shatos um mayroon ako na kabank na some some um riff idea from like 2 3 years ago and then i just you know built on that one and then just sang what i was feeling at the moment and it became the song so yun siya so galit sa employers pero galit sa employers <laughs> pero i mean there are many things in the world that could be just as annoying and they have power over you mm-hmm. like employers <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you, know, you can exactly. that's easily translatable everything from small things like for me um you know things that i am galit at is like either people who take forever waiting in line you know like nakapila ka tapos hindi nila alam ano yung order nila Pagdating sa cashier. Yung mga ganun. Yung mga annoying things na ganun. To bigger things like, you know, let's talk about, do we want to talk about the pandemic response of the powers that be? Diba? Galit. Diba? Galit. Diba? They have power over you. And then now, okay, so I we were discussing this off cam um, earlier, um, but your O Flamingo Volumes vinyl release is doing very well. So yeah. guys, why why yeah. the push why the push to vinyl? I know it's yeah. a it's a thing, it's a thing now. I mean, the the vinyl culture has reemerged. 
and it's hotter than ever. It's outselling all the other formats and all that. But as a band, it's a different perspective. As a collector, you have things that you you know you want to collect, right? Um, or things that you're after. But as a band, why the big push to vinyl? Mm, uh, Pat I has think, an answer. I think the the pag-usapan <laughs> lang or suggest ko yun lang. <laughs> <laughs> Game na. So, yeah. um, Everybody's like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. 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 In the chat box, it's like, Game, game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, ano, gusto, gusto ko siyang gawin. Um, I guess because na experience ko na rin with um, yung Apertal and other bands na we would release on vinyl. And then, like, I mean, yung gratification lang of seeing your music on this huge format and um, and and playable format that you know w- won't like okay like let's say spotify will deteriorate in in 10 years right but then this thing will deteriorate in like 100 years so like yeah. um there was that there's that i know and, 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 and so long, i guess i w- I think the rest of the band were not really sure, like kind of mm. like dipping their toes lang into the idea. But then I was, I was quite enthusiastic about it. And then I hope they're convinced by now that it was a good idea. <laughs> and um, of course. <laughs> but Hell you know, yeah. I, I just, there's just like this gratification of seeing your music in the flesh and seeing the artwork and then you getting all of those, those feelings that. You, you had when you were a kid that that made you also want to become a musician or be an artist or play music in the first place. It was really like going through the liner notes and, you know, like r- ripping that CD back and forth or that tape, you know, and um, I guess it's, it's a very highly idealistic concept where you hope that your music would find people just like you. Like I, think and, a, and, I think I think that's great because when you release something on a physical format, right? Um, it's a it's a big experience to actually hold your album in your hand, and as you were saying, going through the artwork, the liner notes from a creative um, position of being the band, not just recording the music, but going through the liner notes, who to thank, what pictures are we going to use on a physical format, and then holding it in your hands, is not something you get with any streaming platform. On a streaming platform, oh, it's out. Yung hindi malang yeah. dumaan sa kamay mo. Di ba? Yeah. And, and you're uh, kind of buried in the mix too. Yeah. You're, yeah, because it, there's, no, there's no effort. That's why I love the tangibility of a physical format. I have not been able to give up our CD collection. Um, even though I, have, I don't have a single CD, uh, working CD player in the house. Um, I can't give it up because these are, these are things I grew up with. And these are like the physical... Um, evidence of my musical journey because playlists can get lost mm-hmm. your account can get hacked you know what i mean it's not tangible eh? but i think releasing it on on vinyl for you guys you're right Pate. Eh? it's something that'll last for a hundred years because if you think about the 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 lps that our parents were listening to or our grandparents were listening to they're still alive today you know and that is i think a an actual a more tangible legacy in a sense for your music because it'll if the if, if if for example going back to the apocalypse you know if uh if if the machines ever take over and they kill our internet we'll still be able to play oh flamingo volumes right <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't need the yeah. internet for that if skynet takes over it's okay we have an album <laughs> you know and i, I think, think they that's will that's survive it's Bomb. And it's doing very well. So congratulations on that. That's 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 Thanks. that's amazing. Um, so you've been talking, <laughs> Ayan. Oh, congratulations. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. music video namin siya. Yeah. And daming ang nag nag nagpapa shout out but let's just ignore them. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> si Lilo shout out. Si Jesse, um, you know, um, Mark, 
a lot of people are asking for shout outs. So yeah, hi, hi, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, we're talking about legacy and the uh, the push to create. I, I hope the rest of the band now is on board with physical releases because it's so important, really, as a consumer of music, a big consumer of music. It's just not the same when you release a song on Spotify and it's on my phone. I like the entire journey of going through records, going through cassettes, or you know, yung yung idea na yung kung bumili ka ng album ng LP, especially ng LP, di ba? Tapos uuwi ka, magko-commute ka, puta sobrang cool eh, bitbit niya. <laughs> di ba? Look what I got. I got an album, di ba? Hindi hindi brown envelope lang to, pare, puta ito hey, album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Black yeah, Eagle Black. Black. And yeah. when so releasing releasing this album, um, you guys, some of you are vinyl collectors, am I correct? Mm. Are you yeah, are you ready for beginner uh, are, beginner vinyl collectors? Yes. Uh, sobrang beginner lang ako. But it, do you mind if we do just a short show and tell of your top three? Sure. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Who wants to go first? Oh, yeah, si Pat mo ready na. I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So the um I don't have all my records here because I'm in my condo, but from the ones I chose out of the ones I brought, the first um one I have is um my favorite. It's black. You can't see it. It's Black Star by David Bowie. No um it's super cool because it has this like star <laughs> cut out thing and then the record is here and it opens into a gatefold and wow. then um, yeah, that's David Bowie before he, this is his, uh, he actually released this album postpartum, which yeah. I think Post- is, posthumously, no? Yeah, yeah, like, oh, sorry, what, what did I say? Postpartum. Um, postpartum. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay, laughs> <I'm talking about laughs> sorry, what about this? Sorry, what about you? Ganun din naman, ganun din naman. album eh. Anyway, yeah, yeah, he, he, he released it after he died of cancer. So, um, I thought that was super, Super cool that, you know, back to what you said about legacy, like, David Bowie is one of my favorite um, artists and uh, favorite, like, art figures, Icon. I guess. Like, because he wasn't really just a musician. He was a mime. He was an actor. He was a fashion icon. He was, he was just everything. Like, he kind of lived and breathed. Um, creativity and expression. So that's what I love about him. I like him as a person more than he is a singer. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so in lang tapos yung band that he okay. had on this record uh, features my most favorite drummer ever, Mark Giuliana, as and my favorite bassist maybe Tim Lefebvre. And I read some interviews and. They said, like, oh yeah, because they, um, uh, Mark and Tim are more into the, um, they're more active in this kind of contemporary jazz scene in New York. And for David Bowie to want to work with them was weird for them. Mm-hmm. And they did say that in interviews that it would have been expected that they were adjusting to Bowie the whole time, but it. Actually, the whole time when they were in the studio, Bowie was adjusting to them. Wow. And it's like they were just doing the same thing that they would do, and Bowie would just lay what he could on top. So if you listen wow. to this record, it's very much a contemporary jazz record with, with David Bowie on it, which Fantastic. which is which I really, really like. Um, my, my second album is... Another black record. It's Overgrown Path by Chris Cohen. Yeah. Uh, Chris Cohen is the, the guitarist of this indie rock experimental band called Deer Hoof. And oh. uh, the Deer Hoof is also a band that the the whole band um, I think likes in common. And we all did go to watch them in Manila <laughs> two years ago. And uh, this is a solo album and it's actually one of the first records I bought ever. Like, yung parang, I bought it, wala pa akong player, and I bought it. Um, I was in the States at the time, 2012, and this album just reminds, it was like the soundtrack of my year. 
mm-hmm. and it was kind of like what we, it did get me into vinyl but it was one of my first records i ever bought and um just just reminds me of the time because i was in new york at the time and i was surrounded by a lot of hipsters where vinyl was common already there in the states so i felt op so i bought a record <laughs> and, uh, and then <laughs> Uh, my last record is on um, another black album. It's um, it's the the epic by Kamasi Washington, Wait, uh, which is another contemporary jazz, more spiritual jazz record. Um, it's a three LP. Uh, it's fat. I don't know if you can see it. It's fat. Yeah. And um, man, I mean. I can't even describe Kamasi Washington's music. It's also signed, which makes it super special. Cool. cool. So C Germs um, was in Switzerland at the time, and she was only there for four days. And I, I Google searched concerts in Switzerland for the time she was there, and I saw Kamasi Washington was there, so I I made her go, <laughs> and I, I I made her. I made her buy me a record, and she got it signed. And then, yeah, I mean, the Thundercats on this, like, man, it's just uh, Kamasi Washington's music kind of makes you feel like you don't know anything about music, which is super, super, super nice. And it's it's literally super epic and super spiritual. Like, I think. Um, Kamasi Washington is like a modern day in Sun Ra almost and like uh, to be alive it's like I, I'm a fan also of Sun Ra but like mm-hmm. let's say it's like to be alive in the time of Kamasi Washington and then like let's say like 40 years from now like let's say if Kamasi Washington dies he'll be like holy shit I was alive when Kamasi Washington was alive also and that's just crazy for me to think of so yeah, yes, those that's, are my, that's that's a great. Those selection. are my three records. Yeah. That's a great selection of albums, man. Oh, uh, who's next? Who's ready? So yeah, I can go next. Um, first one, ah, yung 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 mga selection ko ay more of like the stories that go with it, more than the actual music itself. Um, itong first I Ultimate Ultimate Battle Weapon Volume 4. So it's a uh, alam niyo yung samples na ginagamit ng mga DJ for scratching. Um mm. let let me show you. So I got this um teka, bakitan natin. Ay. Yung meron siyang mga markers and then an ba to? Sira sira na. Ginagamit siya ng DJ to like yung mga wiki wa wiki wiki wa. So I found out <laughs> na hindi pala yun, like actual um, songs, pero merong mga si- plaka na may actual samples, like, or parang tone lang. And then that's what they use for turntablism. So what happened oh. with this was, um, meron ako nakitang nagbenta ng pair of ano, um, Technics SL1200 na bentang adik as in sobrang bentang adik so binili ko parang game sige game ako kunin ko yan um and then nataon na DJ siya yung yung memory ko of it ay it was located in Litex for those who don't know um <laughs> Litex in Commonwealth Avenue is not a very safe, safe place <laughs> like as in rock and roll rock and roll siyang lugar and at the same time i think Medyo fresh grad ako nito. This was like, parang kakatuto lang ng girlfriend ko mag-drive. So, nag-drive siya sa Commonwealth <laughs> na medyo bago lang siya. Papunta sa Litex and then we got this. Um, yun nga, tapos nalaman ko na DJ siya. Tapos nalaman ko, ba't binibenta ka kasi parang ayaw na niya. So, ayun. Then, sabi ko, meron ka ba noon nung ginagamit pang scratch? Sabi niya, ito, meron ako. So, kinuha ko na. So, parang, yun. Dahil doon, nagkaroon ako ng like ba- set up na battle as in like with the with the whole mixer crossfader thing um kasi nga parang wala ang ang mura niya tas parang game okay next um next is this this uh Beatles uh, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band um super special to me because this is a uh, first pressing 
As in wow. UK release first pressing. So mono pa siya from 1967. My sister just got it. Nagpunta siya sa UK. Tapos parang, oh, meron ang pasalubong for you. Tapos parang, oh wow. Wow. Dude, so, wow. Never, wow. never got a plane eh, Kasi ayaw magastos. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> yung, rainy, so, <laughs> yung pang rainy day shit mo. Ito pang rainy day. So, nung nagpunta ako sa Osaka, nakakita ko ng similar na plaka. Yun yung binili ko. Tapos yun yung plane ko. <laughs> Kasi nga parang ayoko tong ever buksan. So guys, uh, we're taking we're taking bids now for uh... <laughs> rainy day rain, rainy day sale. <laughs> um, Dude, that so, can finance your next album. <laughs> Actually, pap. <laughs> oh my god. Papo wala mo lang tayo ano eh. Wala tayong gig eh. Wala tayong gig. Wala tayong gig pa. Next album. <laughs> so <laughs> baka <laughs> Oh, hi, anyway, uh, itong last, um, medyo bago siya. It's a Such Me Jam 88.3 Fresh Filter Volume 1. Never nagka-Volume 2. Pero <laughs> this was the first time na the nakarinig ako. Oh, oh, only one. Ito yung first time na nakarinig ako ng peers namin on vinyl. And yung feeling lang na parang, oh wow. Like, napapakinggan ko sila through that form of media. And then, dun ako nagkaroon ng feeling na parang, sana one day, magkaroon din kami ng ganito. Ng, ng, like, marinig ko rin yung music namin sa, sa plaka. Naalala ko nung time na to, because we played for the launch of this, tapos parang sinasabi sa amin sa Ashwin, oh, ano, sige, sa ano, sa volume 2. Sama namin kayo, pero ne- never <laughs> na nagka, nagka-volume 2. Pero, buti na lang, Meron tayo nito. Nagka-volumes. Yeah. Volumes. Nagka-volumes. Ito ng segway, guys. Oh, ganda. Volumes. So, uh, available bu- bu- sa inyo. Buksan mo naman. Buksan so, mo naman. Unbox mo na. Pa. Buksan. Fine. On fine. Sleeve. Fine. Tapos <laughs> first time pa rin papapubuksan. First time. To protect. Okay, okay. Ganda ng segway. Hindi ko pa kasi pinapakinggan kasi wala. Yung, ah, si Howard naman ko. Yung player ko ay na kay Howard. So, Wala akong action. Okay, guys. So, oh, ano, ha? Pamine na lang po. Oh, Color orange, five. Orange, so, orange, 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 yan. Side A, side B. Pamine na lang po sa comments. Thank you. Available sa inyong suking record stores near you or far away from you. Meron tayong mga couriers available to send it right to your doorstep. Nah. Salamat. Yeah, galing, 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 galing. galing. <laughs> Very good. But no, seriously though, going going back to the Beatles, the Sgt. Peppers, that can finance your next album. I'm sure we're going to get some some uh, private messages about that that has been hailed, especially a first pressing. So guys, next time you go to Papu's house, Alam niya na. <laughs> Alam niya na. Di ba? Alam niya na. Tago mo na yan. Tago, tago mo na yan, bro. Tago mo na yan. And you, Howard, do you have, do you have uh, uh, LPs to show us? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, before I... Speaking after Papu, Papu's two Techniques turntables are with me. Um, you didn't even leave it one? We bought... Me and my girlfriend bought it from him. Kasi gusto... Interesting. Fresh ang addict then. Fresh ang addict then. Fresh ang addict <laughs> Maganda yung ano payment terms. Um <laughs> yeah. interestingly, yung pinakita ni Papu na yung first plaka niya. Nakita ko rin yun nung 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 sinishare niya sa akin yung stuff. Tapos doon talaga ako like na na-dazzle sa sa vinyl. Parang shit, pwede kong iganon. Like I think they like, had specific in... records pala for that. Yun nga. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. It was interesting kasi like those records had like stickers in them. Mas parang, ah, kasi, like, yun yung nagiging parang, parang marker, cue, no? cue markers, oh. parang super fascinating. <laughs> anyway, I got my, so, um, first would be, this is a McCartney 2 Boy. LP. And uh, I really love Paul McCartney's solo stuff, especially ito. Um, I got this in Kubaw actually. It's 300 pesos. It was in the bargain bin. I think because of the the the, <laughs> the state of the, the the cover. Pero I don't know. It, I I didn't I, I would think that it would be rare. Pero fini ko hindi. But like I was listening to this album ever since like I was young and nice. 
this is like weird Paul McCartney stuff. Like, like he was recording this album na diretso, mga synths lang and guitars na diretso lang to recording rack. Like, no art effects wow. and stuff. And he was just record, he recorded everything by himself. And interesting siya kasi, um, I really love the sleeve of this. Kahit medyo warak na siya kasi nga, you know, bargain bin. But it's a picture of him and his child when he was recording the album. Nice. Ganda. And yeah, he had really weird tracks in this one. Like, imagine in 1980, like a super rock star just releasing an indie pop album. <laughs> <laughs> Para I think it's what they do kids these days. Like, just recording um, with their computers at home. I think very uh, um, way, way ahead. Siya. And yeah. Well, that's the beauty about that's the beauty about being Paul McCartney, man. You get to a level where I want to do whatever that I want. Yeah, and that's he, true. you know, he doesn't succumb to any pressure. He just does what he wants. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that you know, Nico, young temporary secretary for the first time, sa RJ one hundred, oh. and then I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is? <laughs> What the fuck are they playing? So yeah. shina, and then Shinazam ko. And I was like, holy crap. It's fucking Paul, Paul McCarthy. McCarthy. It's fucking Paul McCarthy pala. Yeah. Diba? Oh. yeah. You guys should check it out. Like, it has a... Ang weird kasi nang... Like... Ganun yung tunag niya. Yeah, but then, but then Howard, that, that goes into your vision, ha? Huh? Because of O Flamingo. He's weird shit. Paul McCartney, <laughs> Beatles... Shoot yon. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> shoot exactly. Yun. Shoot na shoot. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it's gonna, and the second would be like a Chet Baker sings. Ah. This is a reissue na, but really special to have this one because grade school palang favorite. So bang favorite ko yung album na to kasi Chet Baker is a trumpeteer, but so bang ganda ng bosses niya, like so bang lemig. As in, ganda yung bosses niya, like it's a very soft. <laughs> As in, he would he, he would sing like classics, like I fall in love. As in, super hush and stuff. That was sharing one of the few albums. So sobrang kaya ko kantahin from start to end, including like the trumpet part. Sobrang galeng and like really special to get this on vinyl. Because the experience of like a rainy day, like a bad day, like just putting it on there, dim lights, parang lang. Ang perfect lang nung um, format for this type of music. Like, yun, yun, like, me time, rainy day, like, just listening to music and, like, enjoying tape hiss, stuff like that. Just enjoying the <laughs> oldness. I like that. And the, the tape hiss. <laughs> the oldness of vinyl. So, yeah, must appreciate ko siya. And then it's also colored, like, Ooh. volumes. So, ah. it's nice. That's so nice. nice. Super nice. Ganda. And then, really nice songs. And then, predictable tong last. It's a Dirty Projectors L- <laughs> LP. Uh, Swing Low Majella. One of my favorite from them. Interestingly, um, ito yung only Grammy nominated album nila because of the sleeve design. <laughs> Not because of the music. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend got this for me on my birthday yata. And what's cool is like it has a kasi yung concept ng album parang meron siya mga cuneiform things. And like there's a like a card that comes with the album that is a para siyang hindi siya printed eh. like may meron lang siyang like um embossed stuff that you can mm. only like when you when you like nice. so put it at a certain angle. Nice. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Ano siya? I think it's like a premium type of album. And then, yeah, uh, na enjoy ko siya kasi it came with a um, a 45 that had like B sides na so super favorite ko from this band. Because nice. uh, we bought it from Discogs.com, like from like some European guy. Tapos parang sabi niya sige, sama ko na rin to. So super nice. So it's not actually included yeah. in the release. That was just a, a freebie for you. It was a freebie from a ano, nice. seller. Ganda. 
Nice. That's fantastic. Before we move on to the rundown, just shout out to the Cabirds. Hello. Cabirds. Guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're going now into the rundown. Um, oh, Pat. <laughs> hey, Pat. Building up, Pat? Pat? Are you back? Are you back in Manila? I don't think he's nah, ever coming back to Manila now. He's, he's, <laughs> he's out Stop there. Now. He's out <laughs> there. forever. <laughs> well, if you had a choice, right? Where are you going to ride out the pandemic? That's a, <laughs> that's a nice place to ride it out. You have your gear brought up, right? <laughs> Never. I like that. See? Oh, see? Parang may accent na yan, Never. Never. Papa British Never. na tayo ngayon. Never. All right. So this segment, we're going to go into the rundown. Thank you for sharing um, these LPs with us because it's, it's fantastic. Also, one of the reasons why I love doing this show, it's not only do I get to know the musicians, uh, you guys as artists and as people, um, but I also am very interested in what you listen to. It wide, I think it's a great, um, per, like a personal recommendation to broaden my musical horizon. So what I often do is when I rewatch our old episodes or, you know, the, the episodes of On the Rocks and, you know, of a certain artist, I always fast forward to the portion where they tell me what they listen to because I list it down because I can't do it now because I'm hosting. But I list it down and that, and I search that and it actually broadens. Um, these are bands that I usually would not even think of following or listening to um, or just bands you don't know about or genres that you don't know about. So thank you so much for that because, again, <laughs> I have new I have new things to listen to. <laughs> That's going to be fantastic. Okay, we're going to go into the rundown now where uh, I'm going to be asking you 10 quick questions. And first thing that comes into your head, uh, don't overthink it. Just answer it as, much as, uh, as, as well as you can, okay? And these are some hard questions, but don't worry. There's no mathematics, okay? Um, okay. So let's, go... <laughs> so let's go into uh, let's go into um, the first question. If you had to pick a song, one song, one song in the whole world that would you would call your favorite, what would that song be? Howard, let's start with you. One song. Hmm. One song. I think um, super favorite ko yung Mother Nature's Son ng Beatles. Yeah. Ganda nung, ano niya, guitar plucking and just the Paul McCartney kunyari, farm boy na appreciating nature. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, Papu. Oh, ako, ano, Stay by Q Shay. Yeah. Uh, very pivotal <laughs> song from my childhood na even until ngayon, 2021, pinapakinggan ko pa rin. All right. It stayed. Stayed. <laughs> stayed. <laughs> oh, galing, galing. Uh, Billy, <laughs> what would be your favorite song? I don't know. World, for, if you for, for some reason, the first song that came into my mind is Papuri sa Diyos. For some reason, that was the first song that came into my mind. It, it just brings right. people together. <laughs> I don't know. That's the highlight of Mas. By far. There are a lot of feelings. Oh, take me, Lord. It's like that. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ganda, ganda. You, Pat. Uh... Yeah, when when you asked the question, there was there were two songs that came in to my mind. One was "In My Life" by the Beatles, and the other was "My My Sharona" by the Knack. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Solid, yes, ang ganda ng choices. Yeah. In my Sharona. In my in Sharona. In my Sharona, I like that. Or Sharona Mama, Life. Mama. Sharona <laughs> Life. Yeah. Okay, our next question. Um, if you could pick only one, who would be your favorite local band or artist? One, one lang. Uh, Pat, let's start with you. Yeah, Hicks. Um, gosh, there's so many, but I would say Kapatid. Kapatid. I mean, nice. just just for the what what I was going, they were like my favorite OPM band when I got into OPM. So I would say Kapatid. Kapatid. Very good, Billy. I don't know. The first thing that the first artist that came into my mind today, uh, I would say my favorite would be Zild. Um, 
Benitez of Four of Spades. You near mm. this na latest album, parang wow, ganda. And then when I talk to him about it, ang sabi niya parang feeling ko gets mo kasi pareho tayong basis na hindi masyadong magaling mag-ibang instruments pero nagsusulat ng kanta. So ako, yes, gets. So parang I appreciate that a lot. Nice. Oh, papu. Siyempre, Q-Shade. <laughs> Sinabi ko na kanin, kailangan ko maging consistent. Baka rindigan ko na to. <laughs> okay, and Howard? Hindi ako biased na. Pero if there is really one Filipino band, syempre, E-Heads! My God! <laughs> very good, very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Okay, punta tayo next question. All right, number three. What turns you on? And it's it's up to your interpretation of the question, huh? What turns you on? Howard, let's start with you. <laughs> First thing, it came to my mind when I heard what turns you on. Scenting candle. You want to... I <laughs> Not necessarily horny, but parang, parang, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, alam na natin. Na, alam na natin. If you want to get Howard, I don't even know. have scented candles. Guys, wala daw scented candles si Howard. So, padala natin siya. <laughs> na, nag-o-operate, nag-o-operate naman yung Lala Move tsaka yung ano, ng grab. Okay. Uh, Papu, ikaw, what turns you on? Uh, Sasabihin ka dapat cliche, pero hindi. Uh, <laughs> ano, ako yung that ano, weird. that would be really weird. More of yung ano, how things are made. I really enjoy discovering how things are made. Um, yung yung babies ay ibang how things are made yun. Pero yung seeing how like mga production line, paano bumubuo ng lamesa, I like it. It's so nice. Totoo yun. Very yung, mga, yung mga documentaries na parang oh, how do they make a Harley Davidson? Yeah. Or how they yeah. Uh, this new car. You know, oh, even the, kahit yung the mga steak, chocolate the lang, ganun. Oh, mm-hmm. yung, the, the food ones actually are insane. Super yung nice. procession na how they make chocolate bars or you yeah. know, things like that. Yeah, I love those two. I love those two. Billy, what about you? I'll, I'll be literal about turning me on. Uh, it's uh, I have ADHD, so what turns me on is stimulants. So I'm stimulated. <laughs> so literal turned on. Oh, I'm awake. <laughs> I like that. Stimulants are always good. All right. Oh, yeah. And Pat, what about you? Yeah, the the first thing that came into my mind was like a really fat steak, <laughs> like a fat, ju- juicy steak. Like I can't say no. And I just want it inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm with I'm wow. with you. I'm with you, Pat. I am with you. Yeah. All right. Uh okay, to, so to flip this around, let's ask you what turns you off, Pat. Ooh. Um uh what turns me off? People. Oh my gosh, wait, no, I'm I'm getting into hot water. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're in a pocket. Okay. Um, I know you. Okay, 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 okay. Um, you know, like uh, police escorts and Edsa. Yeah. yeah, that that fucking pisses me off. Not just turns me off, like pisses me off hardcore. Like, mm. like um, whoever that special person is, thinks they can they can go through. And that that pisses me off. I try to break their, I know, actually, which is kind of, I try to <laughs> break their of. their convoy, which 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 is very dangerous and life threatening. <laughs> yes, they it can is. Just, I've actually they, I've tried to do that once, yeah. and we actually got the back door of the escort um, opened up and guns pointed at us. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. God. But I, I, yeah, I have, and, it, and it really we, we decided. Okay, maybe not. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's bad. I know it's bad, but I, I don't know. It just, it just, it brings out a strong sense of in, injustice in me in a very mundane setting, which which really, really annoys me. And, you know, True. You know. I can totally relate to that. Billy, what about you? What turns you off? Um, it's a Filipino thing. Uh, language na uh, they replace I with isyung. <laughs> 
So it's like, um, pag, paborito kong pagkain ay baboy. They would say, paborito kong pagkain is yung baboy. It really annoys me so much. Ah, it, it turns okay. me off so much. I, I hate it. <laughs> they don't want to say I for some reason. You should observe that, Mar. It's very common. <laughs> mm, I, will take, I will take note of that. I never realized that before, but that's Watch true. all the YouTube uh, Pinoy vloggers. They all they never say I, ever. How it's strange. Un- yeah, it's, it's very strange. How it's strange. Strange. It's a very strange linguistic uh, choice, I think. Okay, all right. That's weird, but I will check that out. Um, oh, Papu, ikaw, what turns you off? Ako yung, yung mga merong capacity to register as voters, but choose not to. Ah... Uh, Uh, parang dude come on <laughs> that parang yung feeling nila na hindi sila apektado or parang mm. ayaw nila maging involved in any so- form of politics when in reality everything they do from the things they buy to the things they enjoy political yun lahat so i just wish people would register and vote come on guys september yeah, I- 30 I agree, I agree. Wala kang wala kang wala kang karapatang magreklamo kung hindi ka registered voter at hindi ka bumoto. Mm-hmm. And basically, you can't you can't stay on the fence. And that's with any decision in your life, yeah. right? And this is this particular decision to vote, I think, Papu, and I'm with you on this. Is because to decide not to register to vote means that you're not only sitting on the fence. Eh. It's basically saying, "Bahal na kayo." Mm-hmm. And you're siding with those I mean, those in power right now because you're letting them, like, yeah. wala, go lang. Parang, sige, yeah. kaya na. Yeah. That's Feeling true. ko hindi That's... ako affected. Pero... I'm with you. I'm with you on that. <laughs> so guys, please go out and register and vote. We need your votes. <laughs> and vote wisely, please. Okay. Uh, Howard. Howard, ikaw. Turn off. Yeah. In line with Papu, like, people who understand the correct facts and reasoning of things but still continue to do the opposite <laughs> like they could get like i'm sure like maraming things that people in power do na like self motivated uh, but parang how could they still continue to do like the opposite of the right thing even if they know it harms a lot of people so wrong di ko maintindihan how do you sleep at so, so basically uh, people who drank the cool aid <laughs> yeah, who are yeah, are, yeah. De- are defying logic, are defying um, uh, rightful values or morals, yeah. or you know we all instinctively know what the right thing to do is, and even contrary to all evidence, they still believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. brainwashed. We could call them brainwashed, right? Yeah, yeah. to a certain degree, so. they're brainwashed. Okay. Um, okay. Next. Uh, next uh, question I have is: What would be your favorite word? One word, what would that be? Howard. <laughs> um, ang naisip ko lang right now, lush. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of oh, sad <laughs> May tema tayo. Oh. <laughs> bumalik, bumalik. Ano na eh, na-warm up na to that. Wait, <laughs> you, can get, you can get scented candles at lush. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a yeah, yeah, it's a store? It's a store. Yeah, it's a store. Oh, my God, I didn't know there was a store. Oh. Wow. So this is the universe. The universe is telling yeah. you. All right. So to, they're, uh, the, get... they're the... Talaga. You can smell it from all over the malls. Dude, yeah. You're, 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 you're walking, main, you're, you're main walking pa lang towards the towards Lush and you can smell it already. I, I cannot stay there for more than two minutes because I get I overwhelmed. Grabe. Grabe. Interesting. But, but they have your How scented candles. candles. Yeah. And you can they wash your hands. Candles. Yeah. <laughs> I like it because at the end of the word, it goes, so parang it sounds like what it means. Uh, I like yeah, that. Yeah, true. I like that. I like that. What about you, Papu? What's your favorite word? Uh, ako yung favorite word ko. Medyo bago lang siya. Parang nagiging testament siya ng... Um, evolution of language at kung paano siya nabibend at kung paano walang rules. Yung word na yun ay is yung. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> walang space yun. Oh, oh. yung space yun. Is no, yung. No, no, no. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Fuck. I almost choked, dude. Holy shit. I'm gonna hassle. 
Uh, okay. Okay, Billy, going to you. What is your favorite word? Not is yung part. <laughs> um, I know. I think my favorite and hatest word is moist. The word moist. moist. It's such a weird word, moist. It, it's so it, it, it wrote, sounds moist. It sounds, ugh, but then it has the capability to like make everyone feel weird equally. Moist. True. Moist. And it's a different. It's sometimes it's a good weird. Sometimes it's a bad weird. Yeah. Right. So. I get. I get. Moist. I get that. What about moist? Moist. Uh, what about Cake. you, Pat? What's your favorite word? Yeah. Like, gosh, it's it's really bad. But I guess my favorite word is fuck. Like, it fuck as a as an expression. expression. And yeah. I mean, let let's not go into its other uses. But then, like, like fuck us. Like sometimes you just just need to say it mm. and to say that word and. It, because it has a lot of emotional uh, like force behind it. I think yeah. that's why I like it. Not necessarily for what it means or the verb action of it, but like I, I feel like it 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 drives your point across. It it kind of in a sentence it it moves your idea to a faster yeah. A to B like <laughs> that. And uh, but I appreciate the word fuck for its. Uh, use in that way, yeah. and there are a lot of uses just, for that yeah. simple word as an expression. Yeah. yeah, it it could be it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be just an expression of just a sudden emotion. So many uses for that word, yeah. um, which is fantastic. I particularly love that word too because <laughs> it can be used in so many ways. Yeah. Okay. Next question, Aten. Um, if you can name just one, what would be your guilty pleasure? Pat, ikaw. What's your guilty it's, pleasure? Uh, um, incense. Ah. Yeah, I mean, it could it could feel like a lot of like brouhaha or whatever, but I I light incense all the fucking time, and you yeah. can't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're talking to a guy who does the same thing. I have a lot. <laughs> my my particular my particular favorites are uh, variations of sandalwood. I just yeah, like yeah. the oh, earthiness same. of it. Yeah. I like and the like earthiness Champa. of it. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about you, Billy? Um, I talked about this on my stream yesterday. Uh, my guilty pleasure is being a chismos. <laughs> 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 as, in, sorry, as, in, as in like the other the other day parang yung kapit bahay namin pinuntahan ng tanod tapos yung my fiance just went up to me and said we build yung kapit bahay natin natan we build the gulo tapos oh, no. ako sa pintuan sa baba to 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 narinig niyo narinig niyo nangyari wala daw maganda yung sound proofing ng pinto pero we tried the kind of coming up <laughs> so guilty pleasure could be just sorry. sorry sorry no hey it's a it's a it's a thing man it's a real thing just like you know i don't watch the news that's why i maintain my facebook account because if i if i remove my facebook and i've been dying to have the courage to i you know deactivate my facebook but then where would i get all my cheese meats <laughs> diba cheese meats is life Okay. <laughs> it's life. It's life, man. All right, Papu, we go. I don't know if pleasure me. Oh, I'd say K pop. Like, yung specifically, yung girl groups ng K pop. Like, recently, um, naha try ako manood ng K pop videos in 4K sa TV. Tas parang, what? Wow. Shining, shimmering, splendid. If, like, uh, <laughs> sumabog yung utak ko nung napanood ko. Kasi sa, sa phone ko lang naman sila like napapanood. Like yung mga music video. Oo, oh, oh, yung music, music video. Yung video. 4K. Music video. Like parang, wow. Ang linaw ng lahat. Yan. Yan. Their production say, values, their production so values bad. are amazing. So and if you watch documentaries about them, pucha, what they go through, ah. Yung mga academies nila, grabe. Para silang NBA athletes. Parang <laughs> oh, <ganun>. oh. <laughs> Cut throat talaga. Mm. Di ba? Alright. What about you, Howard? Ako, Guilty pleasure. Dessert talaga eh. As in, chocolate cake, ice cream. As in, kung, kung hindi eat. lang talaga ako natuto, magpigil. Yeah, I would really just eat like a whole pack of anything in one go. 
Have you finished yeah. a whole cake in your life? I, I think that when I like in grade school, madalas like uh yeah. At least ikaw, grade school pa. Game. Ako, yung umpisa ng lockdown, nakaubos ako ng isang buong cake. <laughs> Kasi emotional, e- emotional <laughs> eater ako. And the best thing really yeah. is dessert. It's really... Yeah. Sometimes you have your... De- sometimes I have my dessert before the meal. Um, I, I feel, yeah. I feel that. Before and after. <laughs> before, before and, and after. after. Kasi <laughs> just before <laughs> after. Tapos uh, na nasa, well, hindi, excentric ako, mauna yung dessert. Tapos mag <laughs> meal. Tapos, oh, eh, kailangan may dessert ulit. <laughs> That's cool. All right, let's go to the next question. All right, um, if you could collaborate with any artist, any artist, living or dead, local or foreign, anyone, in any timeline, who would that be? Howard, only one. Oh, Bob Marley, talaga. Eh. Like, yung ano lang, yung mom. I'm sure, like, if maka interact mo si Bob Marley, even outside music. Ano lang. Yeah. Okay lang tayo. We're fine. <laughs> I think that I think he he would like really literally give on like good good vibes. Nice. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It would be interesting to talk to him. Just talk to him even. <clears throat> Much more yeah. play pa, diba? What about you, Papu? Uh, oh, gusto ko talaga makaka-collaborate is yung Q-shape. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. Final answer. <laughs> no phone, a friend. <laughs> okay, Kyushe. What about you, Billy? Artist. Um, I think I would say Carol K. Bassist. Um, I just wanna like be in the same studio as her and see how she works. Best. Nice. In person, nice. yeah. Galing. And Pat. Solid, solid. Uh, ako, ano, Miles Davis. Uh, Miles Davis in the 70s. Mm. Where, or very, the 80s. Very specific. Very yung, specific. Yung, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yung weird. When he, was, when he was getting weird. Yeah. When he was getting, um, when he was making music for hippies in the 70s. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. We're going into our last question right now. Um, so when you get to heaven, and that's going to be a long time from now, pa, but when you get to heaven, what do you want God to say to you? Pat, let's start with you. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Billy, what about you? Nang ginagawa pa dito. Tapos nakita ka lang ni God kasi nasa gates ka ng heaven tapos nakikinig ka. Nakikinig lang po. May nangyari. Bababa din ako. Bababa din ako. Kanina ka pa. Kanina ka pa. <laughs> Ikaw, Papu, what do you want God to say to you? Uh, Siyempre, gusto ko sabihin niya sa akin na you've lived a good life. Um, all throughout your life, you carried my uh, teachings and spread my word to the people and the lives that you got to touch. So, gusto ko pasalamatan niya ako for... <clears throat> Doing a good job. Being <laughs> obedient to him. Um, so basically, you want God to say, thank you, thank you, Papu. Thank you. I owe you. You're welcome. I, I, I owe you. Galing. I, I, Galing. I, I, Galing. That's got to be the most unique <laughs> answer ever on this show. <laughs> Ikaw, Howard. Ako, since parang madalas ko kinikwestion si God, gusto ko, pag nakita ko siya, like, yun yung nangyari, gusto ko sabihin na, sabi ko sa'yo hey, eh, pero mahal pa rin kita. Come to yeah. me. <laughs> at, at least, kung, kung parang in my deathbed, sabi ko, ayun eh, mawala na lang ako. At least kung makita ko si God, He will welcome pa rin niya ako. I think, okay yun na feeling. Kesa sa ikas niya ako, tell niya ko na. <laughs> Bye. Para pag ipaprank ka lang pala niya. Oh, parang, parang joke lang. Uh, It's a prank. Oh, oh It's a no God. for me. <laughs> Yeah. It's so, so bad. bad. <laughs> no, it's so bad. Uh-huh. All right, so one for the road, Daya. One for the road. One last question for the road. Um, you guys have been around making music. You've just released a new music video. You've, your, your album is on vinyl. What words of wisdom or advice would you give to anyone just starting out in music today? Uh, Pat, let's start with you. Uh, 
don't give up. It's it's really cliche, but I mean, this oh, this will only resonate with the people who also have that spirit not to give up. You know what I mean? Like I can just freely say, don't give up. But if it hits the wrong person, or it doesn't hit, yeah, yeah. If it hits the wrong person, they won't get it. Also, so you know, if there's people listening now, and you were touched by what I said, <laughs> send me an email and say thank you. <laughs> don't give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up. No, really, because it. I mean, mu- music is like a. It's a slow burn. It's a slow burn. But then with the the fastness of of social media and the internet today, it you you tend to get impatient. But really, like um, if you want this to be your career, you're thinking fifty years or more, right? So it, it, it don't give up because if you give up in the beginning, you don't know if. Yeah, you just don't know. You just don't know. Yeah, lang, yeah, lang. yeah that's my advice. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Pat. What about you, Billy? Any advice? Um, I think it's uh, connect with your community. Um, you will always find a pocket where you belong um, in the music scene. And I think those people that you hang out with, uh, interact with, and share your music with, and make music with, would be like the friends that you will have for the rest of your life. And it's, it's really really nice um, experience to have having that community where you can share the music that's very true and not only a, a community where you share the music but since the pandemic um i i alone have witnessed and watched so many fundraisers um and the first person to say yes to these fundraisers for a fellow musician is another musician and it's a great feeling that you you know you watch out for each other and that should be extended beyond the music community that should be all communities that's a great that's that's great advice really okay papu uh my advice is uh to give up as early as now <laughs> especially if you're if you want to do music kasi gusto nyo yung fame and fortune of it ako na nagsasabi sa inyo your odds are pretty slim um it's like you wanting to go into the nba or play, win a gold at the Olympics, and then magsisimula ka pa lang. So, gets parang wrong foot forward siya. But if you just do it because you want to do it, regardless of the consequences, then ayos yun. Ayos yun. Kasi nga, the moment you become greedy, or like meron kang parang gustong marating, and then you everything else you just ignore, ano siya, it just becomes frustrating. Tulad nga ng sabi ni Pat, di ba? 50 years. Imagine spending 50 years of your life trying to get something na um, hindi klaro sa'yo kung bakit mo siya ginagawa or parang napaka-selfish nung reason kung bakit mo siya ginagawa. Imagine wasting 50 years of your life eh kung naghanap ka na lang ng other things. So yes, give up as early as now. <laughs> Opposite okay. Kaya, but... <laughs> okay, if God if God were here, he would say thank you, Pap. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and Howard? Ako siguro, especially to younger uh, people doing music, is if it sounds bad now, one of these days, it, it would sound better. <laughs> <laughs> or not. I think your experience, co personally, then... Like on some days, para yeah, bano pangit. But like hearing the same thing in a different context or like in a different place in your life, parang ma appreciate mo yung mga things na like you hate that you did. Pero yeah, yun din yung weird thing about music, I guess. Like when you do the music, you don't really hear yourself. So parang you should give yourself a second chance to like uh, ex- uh, hear yourself like as a listener. Mm. And yeah, it would sound better. Zoom out. <laughs> Zoom out. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for sharing um, your your time with us tonight. Thank you. Um, that's all the time we've got. But guys, please stay safe. Stay strong. Stay weird. Please stay weird. 
Um, and hey, more power to you guys. Thank you so much, Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, Flamingo. Thank you, guys. Oh, plugging, plugging. Volumes available. Volumes, <laughs> Volumes available. Thank, right. you record store. thank you, Offshore. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Offshore. All right. Thank you. Thank you, oh, Flamingo. Stay weird. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That, was, that was fantastic. Um, you know, when you... I love doing the show because, you know, I, I expect it to be made to feel old throughout this whole show. But then really the age thing just disappeared. And when you're talking about music, with people who love music, with people who do music, um, you really not only learn a lot, but you, ha- you also realize a lot of shared um, values, connections, um, ideas, and humor, I think, is the most important thing. And now I have a whole new list of artists to check out. And to research on and to listen to um, just uh, by talking to, you know, musicians. And it's the most fantastic thing in the world. So thank you so much, Oh Flamingo. I love you guys. Um, so uh, just a few reminders before we call it a night. From Offshore Music, the jazz group Extrapolation is bringing you their live set vibe in the form of an album called Alive at Wildgrass Studios to be released on all major streaming platforms this August 22nd. The five-track EP will play exactly like an Extrapolation live set. Their usual mix of eclectic original music and reimagined covers will blow your mind, man. This forthcoming EP is the band's first official live release. And of course, don't forget the Eraserheads uh, Sabadon 1995 from the Esquire Recordings is still rocking out on all streaming platforms make sure you pre-order your vinyl release that's coming out in september maraming maraming salamat then to buenos dias panadiria the misty mountain cafe for your milo buns and oh actually everything you make is fantastic and to misty mountain cafe for your premium blend coffee uh now we have an announcement from liquor.ph our friends at liquor.ph are, t- are telling us the new benriach Core range is now available in the Philippines only at liquor.ph. For a limited time, you can get their four award-winning bottles. The Ben Riach Original 10, Smoky 10, the 12, and the Smoky 12 at special introductory prices on bottles and bundles. Each order comes with a sampler kit for the August 31st virtual launch masterclass. Make sure you sign up for that so you can try all four expressions. Pick up your new Ben Riach, Ben Riach, Ben Riach, Ben Riach, Ben Riach off of their website today. Now, remember, for your orders during this ECQ, please email them at sales at liquor.ph for assistance. Pickups can be arranged for you at their Makati office. Just tell them Jamie sent you, baby. So, guys, thank you for joining us. Um, Thank you to O Flamingo. Thank you to Offshore Music. Thank you to all of you for taking the time and uh, spending some time with us tonight. I'm Jamie Wilson. Thank you for tuning in to On The Rocks. I'm just reminding you guys to please stay safe, stay strong, stay sane. And uh, from the page of O Flamingo, stay weird. Keep on rocking and keep on rolling. And if all else fails, just let the music keep you going. And you find out that life has gotten you shaken up or stirred, mixed up or on the rocks. What matters most is that you take your shot. So thank you very much and good night. Cheers, baby. On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson is brought to you by Offshore Music. Go where the sound takes you.